Yes, welcome to the Jamaica Yo Podcast. You know, yeah, we are a group of people who are law-abiding citizens who believe in the rule of law and respect the rights of everyone. Yes, you know, a, a young, a young, a young girl. Uh, when I say young girl, you know, um, maybe nine, ten or thereabouts. I know it's supposed to be her parents who told her to call. Yes, you know, she's asking if I can read, you know, the philosophy and opinion of Marcus Garvey until the book arrives in Jamaica and Moi can give her one. So I'm just waiting to talk to Moi because we have, you know, a part two to follow up, you know, based on the conversation that we had about her husband, Duke. So today we're going to take some time and educate the people them about the works of Marcus Garvey. But we're not going to read off the book one time, you know. You understand? So, this has nothing now to do with the channel and... This is not the channel. This is Marcus Garvey work. So, we're just sharing it with the people. Yeah, one of the greatest black men ever. Since Moses. Them call him the Black Moses. The FBI call Marcus Garvey the Black Moses. So, yeah, and that means he was the one that was going to deliver black people. But you know that he died at a very young age. He died from a strokes. Even Marcus Garvey was alive. Show you all the media, you know, they helped kill him, you know. They published how many times in America that he dead, you know, in England, you know. At the time, we never have, um, there was no internet or phone or anything like that. So, yeah, I'm telling you, man, that's how propaganda worked. So that's why we hate propagandas and liars. Yeah. So that's why we are always at the Jamaica Young Police Channel. Yes, man, we speak the truth. Because we want the people to know facts. So we're starting. So today we're starting off the philo um, philosophy and opinions of Marcus Garvey. Edited by Amy GX Garvey. That's Marcus Garvey, first wife. Freedom's battle once begun. Bequeathed by bleeding sire to son, who baffled oft is ever won. Byron, first edition, volume one, published by the Universal Publishing House, 56 West, 135th Street, New York City, New York, New York, USA. And this was in 1923. So they say dedicated to the true and loyal members of the Universal Negro Improvement Association in cause of African redemption. And the Universal Negro Improvement Association is a UNIA. And most history teachers in Jamaica don't even know that because they don't teach them that. You understand? That's the Marcus Garvey organization. So, you know, we are looking at a picture here of Amy GX Garvey. Yeah, this volume is compiled, the preface, the volume is compiled from the speeches and articles delivered and written by Marcus Garvey from time to time. My purpose for compiling same primarily was for the publication, but rather to keep as a personal record of the opinions and saying of my husband during his career as leader of that portion of the human family known as the Negro race. However, on second thoughts, I decided to publish this volume in order to give to the public an opportunity of studying and forming an opinion of him, not from inflated and misleading newspapers and magazine articles, but from expressions of thought enunciated by him in defense of his oppressed and struggling race, so that by his own words, he may be judged and niggers the world over may be informed and inspired for truth brought to light forces conviction and the state of conviction inspires action. The history of contact between the white and black races for the last 300 years or more records only a series of pillages, wholesale murders, atrocious brutalities, industrial exploitation, disfranchisement of one of on the other, the strong against the weak, but the sun of evolution is gradually rising. 
shedding its light between the clouds of misery and oppression and quickening and animating to racial consciousness and eventual national independence. Black men and women, the world over, it's human, therefore, that few of us within the nigger race can comprehend this transcendent period. We all suffer in a more or less degree. We all feel this awakening spirit of true manhood and womanhood, but it is given to few the vision of leadership is an inspiration. It is a quality born in a man. Therefore, in course of leadership, it is natural that one should meet opposition because of ignorance, lack of knowledge and sympathy of the opposition in understanding fully the spirit of leadership. With the dawn of this new era, which precedes the day of national independence for nigger, it is well for all members of the race to understand their leadership, know what is its essentials, its principles are, and help it to attain its goal and liberate a race in the truest sense of the world. In chapter one of this volume, I have en endeavored to place before my readers gems of expression convincing in their truths. Chapter two, deal with definition and expositions of various interesting themes. Chapter three and four, contain collections of belief essays on subjects affecting rural condition generally and nigger in particular. In chapter five, I have reproduced what I consider two of the best speeches of my husband. It is my sincere hope and desire that this small volume will help to dis disseminate among members of my race everywhere the true knowledge of their past history, the struggles and striving of present leadership on the glorious future of national independence in a free and redeemed Africa, achieved through organized purpose and organized action. Amy Jakes Garvey, New York City, February 23rd, 1923. Yeah, so that's the introduction you know, to the book. So we're going to um, start right now. Chapter 1, Philosophy and Opinions of Marcus Garvey, History. History is the landmark by which we are directed into the true course of life. The history of a movement, the history of a nation, the history of a race is the guidepost of that movement destiny. The nation's destiny, that race destiny. What you do today that is worthwhile inspires others to act at some future time. Chance has never yet satisfied the hope of a suffering people. Action, self-reliance, the vision of self and the future have been the only means by which the oppressed have seen and realized the light of their own freedom. Life, life is that existence that is given to man to live for a purpose, to live to his own satisfaction and pleasure, providing he forget not God who created him and who expects a spiritual obedience and observation of moral laws he has inspired. There is nothing in the world common to man that man cannot do. The hens you serve that are selfish will take you no further than yourself. But the hens you serve that are for all in common will take you even into eternity. It is only the belief and the confidence we have in God why man is able to understand his own social institutions and move and live like a rational human being. Take away the highest ideal. Faith and confidence in a God and maintain at large is reduced as to savagery and the race destroyed. A race without authority and power is a race without respect. Criticism is an opinion for good or ill, generally indulged in by the fellow who knows more than 
anyone, anyone else yet the biggest fool. There is no criticism that calls not forty yet another. The last critic is the biggest fool of all, for the world starts and ends with him. He is the source of all knowledge, yet knows nothing, for there is not a word one find to use that is there, not another that hath the same meaning. Then wherefore do we criticize? Fear. Fear is a state of nervousness, fit for child and not men. When men fears a creature like himself, he offends God. In whose image and likeness he is created, man created equal fears, not man, but God. To fear is to lose control of one's nerves, one's will to flutter like a dying fowl, losing consciousness, consciousness yet alive. Ambition, ambition is the desire to go forward and improve one's condition. It is a burning flame that lights up the life of the individual and makes him see himself in another state. To be ambitious is to be great in mind and soul, to want that which is worthwhile and strive for it. To go on without looking back, reach into that which gives satisfaction. To be humanly ambitious is to take in the world which is the province of man. To be divinely ambitious is to be offended. God by rivaling him in his infinite majesty. Admiration is a form of appreciation that is sometimes mistaken for something else. There may be something about you that suggests good fellowship when keeping at a distance, but in closer contact would not be tolerated otherwise it would be love. Religion is one's opinions and belief in some ethical truths. To be a Christian is to have the religion of Christ and so to be a believer in Muhammad is to be a Muhammadan but there are no so many religion that every man seems to be a religion unto himself. No, poor, no two persons think alike even if they are outwardly profess the same faith, so we have as many religion in Christianity as we have believers. Debt. Debt is the end of life, and in the individual or the thing, a physical, the crumbling of the body into dust from whence it came. He who lives not uprightly dies completely in the crumbling of the physical body, but he who lives well transform himself from which is mortal to immortal. Faithfulness. Faithfulness is activated by a state of heart and mind in the individual that changes not. No one is wholly faithful to a cause or an object, except his heart and mind remain firm without change or doubt. If one attitude or conduct changes towards an object, then one has not lost in one's faithfulness. It is a wholeness of belief overshadowing all suspicion, all doubts, admitting of no questions to serve without regret or disgust, to obligate one's self to what which is promised or expected to keep our word and do our duty well. There are but few faithful people nowadays. Prohibition. Prohibition is to abstain from intoxicating liquor as it makes us morbid and sometimes drunk. But we get drunk every day nevertheless. Not so much by the strength of what we sip from the cup, but what we eat, the water we drink, and the air we inhale which at fermentation conspire to even tide to make us so drunk and tired that we lose control of ourselves and fall asleep. Everybody is a drunkard, and if they were to enforce real prohibition, we should all be dead. There is no strength but that which is destructive, because man has lost his virtues and only respect force, which he himself cannot counteract. 
This is the day of racial activity, when each and every group of this great human family must exercise its own initiative and influence into its own protection. Therefore, Negroes should be more determined today than they have ever been, because the mighty forces of the world are operating against non-organized groups of people who are not ambitious enough to protect their own interests. Wake up Ethiopia, wake up Africa. Let us work towards one glorious end of a free, redeemed, and mighty nation. Let Africa be bright star among the constellation of nation. A man's bread and butter is only insured when he works for it. The world has now reached the stage when humanity is really at the parting of ways. It is a question of mankind thyself. Man, mind thyself. The political readjustment of the world means that those who are not sufficiently able, not sufficiently prepared, will be at the mercy of the organized classes for another one or two hundred years. The only protection against injustice in man is the power, physical, financial, and scientific. The masses make the nation and the race. If the masses are illiterate, that is the judgment passed on the race by those who are critical of, it, if, of its existence. The function of the press is public service without prejudice or partiality to convey the truth as it is seen, understood without favoritism or bias. Education. Education is the medium by which people are prepared for the creation of their own particular civilization and the advancement and glory of their own race. Nationhood. Nationhood is the only means by which modern civilization can completely protect itself. Independence of nationality, independence of government, is the means of protecting not only the individual but the group. Nationhood is the highest ideal of all peoples. The evolutionary scales that weighs nation and races balances alike for all peoples. Hence, we feel sure that someday the balance will register a change for the Negro. If we are to believe the divine injunction, we must realize that the time is coming when every man and every race must return to its own vine and fig tree. Let Africa be our guiding star, our star of destiny. So many of us find excuses to get out of the Negro race because we are led to believe that the race is unworthy, that it has not accomplished anything. Cowards that we are, it is we who are unworthy because we are not contributing to the uplift and upbuilding of this noble race. How dare anyone tell us that Africa cannot be redeemed when we have 400 million men and women with warm blood coursing through their veins. The power that holds Africa is not divine. The power that holds Africa is human and it is recognized that whoever man has done, man can do. We of the Negro race are moving from one state of organization to another. And we shall continue until we have thoroughly lifted ourselves into the organizations of government. Be as proud of your, of your race today as our father were in the days of yore. We have a beautiful history and we shall create another in the future that will establish and astonish the world. What the night is today is a woman to man. The period of change that brings us light out of darkness, darkness out of light, and semi-light out of darkness are like changes we find in a woman day by day. She makes one happy, then miserable. You are to her kind, then unkind. Constant, yet inconstant. Thus we are woman. No real man can do without her. Love, a happy but, mis but miser miserable state in which man finds himself from time to time. Sometimes he believes he is happy, 
by loving. Then suddenly he finds how miserable he is. It is all joy. It sweetens. It sweetens life, but it does not last. It comes and goes. But when it is active, there is no greater virtue because it makes one supremely happy. We cannot hold our love, but there is one love that never changes it or is mistaken, and that is God. The longer we hold our love, and nearer we approach like unto our Creator. The whole world is run on bluff. No race, no nation, no man has any divine right to take advantage of others. Why allow the other fellow to bluff you? Every student of, of political science, every student of economics know that the race can only be saved through solid industrial foundation. That the race can only be saved through political independence. Take away industry from a race. Take away political freedom from a race. And you have a group of slaves. People everywhere are traveling towards industrial opportunities and greater political freedom. As a race oppressed, it is for us to prepare ourselves that at any time the great change in industrial freedom and political liberties comes about, we may be able to enter into a new era as partakers of the joys to be inherited. Lagging behind in the van of civilization will not prove our higher ability. Being subservient to the will and caprice of progressive races will not prove anything superior in us. Being fed to junk of the dregs from the cup of human progress will not will not demonstrate our fitness as a people to exist alongside of them. But when of our own initiative we strike out to build industries, governments and ultimate ultimately empires, then only then we as a race to prove our creator and to man in general that we are fit to survive and capable of shaping our destiny. The world ought to know that it could not be to keep 400 million niggers down forever. There is always a turning point in the destiny of every race, every nation, of all people, and we have come now to the turning point of the nigger, where we have changed from old cringing weakling and transfer into full grown men demand, demanding our portion as men. I am not one for those Christians who believe that the Bible can solve all problems of humanity. The Bible is good in its place, but we are men. We are the creatures of God. We have sinned against him. Therefore, it, it takes more than the Bible to keep us in our place. Man is become, becoming so vile that today we cannot afford to convert him with moral, ethical, physical truth alone, but with that which is more effective implements of destruction. Leadership means everything. Pain, blood, debt. Let me repeat that. Leadership means everything. Pain, blood, debt. To be prosperous in whatever we do is a sign of true wealth. We may be wealthy in not only having money, but in the spirit and health. It is the most helpful agency towards a self-satisfying life. One life one lives in an age like this, nearer perfection, by being wealthy than being poor. To the contented soul, wealth is the stepping stone to perfection. To the miser, it is the nearest venue to hell. I would prefer to be honestly wealthy than a miserably poor. <laughs> to be free from temptation of other people's property is to reflect the honesty of our own soul. There are but few really honest people in that between the thoughts and the deeds we make ourselves dishonest. The fellow who steals hacked dishonestly 
We can steal in thoughts as well as in deeds. Therefore, to be honest is a virtue that but few indulge. To be honest is to be satisfied having all, wanting nothing. To be honest is to be satisfied having all, wanting nothing. If you find yourself in such a state, then you are honest. If not, the temptation of your soul is bound to make you dishonest. This applies to the kings and the peasant alike. All people are struggling to blast away through the industrial monopoly, mon, mon, monopoly of races and nation. But the Negro, as a, as a whole, has failed to grasp its true significance and seemed to delight in filling only that place created for him by the white man. The Negro who live on the Pachonef, Patronage, a philanthropist, is the most dangerous member of our society because he is willing to turn the, turn the black clock of progress when his benefactors ask him to do so. No race in the world is so just as to give other for the asking. A square deal in things, economic, political and social. Men who are in earnest are not afraid of consequences. No one knows when the hour of African, Africa's redemption cometh. It is the wind. It is coming one day like a storm. It will be there. It will be here. When that day comes, all Africa will stand together. Any sane man, race or nation that desire freedom, must of all think in terms of blood. Why even the Heavenly Father tell us that without the shedding of blood, there can be no remissions of sin. Then, how in the name of God, with history before us, do we expect to redeem Africa without preparing ourselves, some of us to die? I pray, God, that we shall never use our physical prowess to oppress the human race, but we will use our strength physically, morally, or otherwise to preserve humanity and civilization. For over 300 years, the white man has been our oppressor and he naturally is not going to liberate us to the higher freedom, the truer liberty, the truer democracy. We have to liberate ourselves. Every man has a right to his own opinion. Every race has a right to its own action. Therefore, let no man proceed, persuade you against your will. Let no other race influence you against your own. The greatest weapon used against the Negro is this organization. If you have no confidence in self, you are twice defeated in the race of life. With confidence, you have won even before you started. At no time within the last 500 year, years can one point to a single instance of the Negro race of haters. The Negro has loved even under serious punishment. The nigger has love evil under severest punishment. In slavery, the nigger loves his master. He safeguard his home, even when he further plan to enslave him. We are not a race of haters, but lovers of humanity's cause. Mob violence and injustice have never helped a race or a nation. And because of this knowledge has gathered from the events of ages, we as a people in this new age desire to love all mankind, not in the social sense, but in keeping with divine injunctions, man love thy brother. Preparedness is the watchword of this age for us as a race to remain as we have been in the past, divided among ourselves, pro parochial insult insularizing and nationalizing our activities as subjects and citizens of many alien races and governments under which we live is but to hold ourselves in readiness for that great catastrophe that is bound to come and that of racial extermination of the hands of the stronger race and the race that will be fit to survive. Humanity takes revenge in crime from one age to the next. According to the growth and development 
of the race so afflict, afflicted, but the, perp the perpetuation, the perpetuation of crime through revenge and retaliation will not save the human race. Europe is bankrupt today, and every nation within her bounds is endeavoring to find new opening, new fields of exploitation, that exploitation that will bring to them the resource, the revenue, and the power necessary for their rehabilitation and well-being. We are living in a strenuous activity age when men see not through the spectacle of sympathy, but demand that each and every, every one measure up in proportion to the world's demand for our service. The attitude of the right race is to subjugate, to exploit, and if necessary, exterminate the weaker people with whom they come in contact. The attitude of the white race is to subjugate, to exploit, and if necessary, exterminate the weaker people with whom they come in contact. They subjugate first, if the weaker people will stand for it, then exploit if they will not stand for subjugation nor exploitation. The other recourse is extermination. If the nigger is not careful, he will drink in all the poison of the modern civilization and die from the effects of it. There can be no peace among men and nation so long as the strong continue to oppress the weak, so as long as injustice is done to other peoples, just so long will we have cause for war and make a lasting peace an impossibility. Hungry men have no respect for law, authority or human life. I am not opposed to the right white race as charged by my enemies. I have no time to hate anyone. All my time is devoted to the upbuilding and development of the nigger race. When nations outgrow, their national limits, they make war and conquers other people's territory so has to have an outlet for their surplus population. The world does not count races and nations that have nothing. Point me to a weak nation and I will show you a people oppressed, abused, taken advantage of by others. Show me a weak race and I will show you a people reduced to serfdom peonage and slavery. Show me a well-organized nation and I will show you a people and a nation rejected, respected by the world. The battles of the future, whether they be physical or mental, will be fought on sci scientific lines and the race that is able to produce the highest sci scientific development is the race that will ultimately rule. Let us prepare today for the tomorrows in the lives of the nations Will we be so eventful that Negroes everywhere will be called upon to play their part in the survival of the fittest human group? Let us, in shaping our own destiny, set us before us the qualities of human justice, love, charity, mercy, and equity. Upon such foundation, let us build a race, and I feel that the God who is divine, the almighty creator of the world, shall, shall forever bless this race of ours and who to tell that we shall not teach men the way, of, way to live life, liberty and true human happiness. Day by day we hear the cry of Africa for the African. This cry has become a positive determined one. It is a cry that is raised simultaneously the world over because of the universal oppression that affect the Negro. All of us may not live to see the higher accomplishment of an African empire so strong and powerful as to compel the respect of mankind. But we in our lifetime can work and as hacked as to make the dream possible within another generation. Yeah, so that is chapter one of the philosophy and opinions of Marcus Giave. So we continue the journey on the next one. You will get chapter two. And chapter two says propaganda. Have yourself a beautiful day. Jamaica Young Police Channel, out.